Uh, that's right, Phil. And as you know, Anonymous has declared war against ISIS. The question is, what can the hacker group actually do? Well, to help us answer that, I'm joined by Robert Siciliano. He is a security analyst with Hotspot Shield. Robert, thanks for joining us. Thank you. So it can be argued that one of ISIS's greatest tools is uh, its recruitment efforts. It's posting videos on YouTube, on Facebook, and other social media sites that have been, well, rather effective. Just today, Islamic State uh, posted an image of the explosive device that it claimed it used to bring down the Russian airline over Egypt. People are saying that this is where a group like Anonymous can really have an impact. Well, certainly, but uh, you know, maybe stifling them via social media, you know, knocking them down electronically uh, might help. It might curtail uh, some of their uh, exposure. But in the end, you know, it's like mushrooms, they'll they'll pop up somewhere else. But it it may help. The question is, though, should these sites be taking this kind of action independently? Uh, Anonymous said it's already hacked about 5,500 ISIS-linked Twitter accounts. Should the likes of Twitter and YouTube and Facebook and other social media be taking action independently? Certainly whenever uh, the users of the site see something that's inappropriate, they usually let the site's administrators know. And when the sites find out about that, they generally do something about it. In the case of um, uh, terrorism, certainly I, I think it's an appropriate uh, uh, method to pull down any rhetoric. Well, U.S. counterterrorism officials are saying that one of the big issues with a group like ISIS is encryption. And uh, encryption specialists like Apple and Google need to provide backdoor access to government agencies in order to be able to track these things more, more carefully. Now, uh, Apple's Tim Cook has said, no way, he is not going to let governments do this regardless. Is there a way that governments can legally force companies like Apple and Google to do this? And, and what about the moral debate here anyway? Well, I suppose there is, uh, you know, I suppose they, 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 they may try to force their hand. You know, I, I work with a company called Hotspot Shield. It's a mobile app that encrypts your wireless connection to Wi-Fi. You know, it masks your data on Wi-Fi. And if that's exposed, if NSA has a backdoor to that, then they have a backdoor to banking information. They have a backdoor to personal information. You can only take that so far. And, and they're always going to find other ways to communicate. By providing backdoor access, I don't know if that's going to solve the problem. This is a boots-on-the-ground issue. But we've heard from ISIS that they're communicating uh, through the site uh, Telegram, which is an encrypted instant messaging app. So encryption is clearly something that they're using. And one could argue that in the case of national security, bringing back the Patriot Act into the focus, that government agencies should be allowed this kind of access on a need-to-know basis. It's certainly a conversation worth exploring. You know, but the general public, they don't want their emails spied upon, their phone calls spied upon, their text messages spied upon. So there's, there, there are privacy issues there, but why, of course. why would the general public be exposed to this? Can we not somehow trust that big brother, the government at large, would be targeting people who have red flags in their messages? I mean, there's no reason for the government to be looking at my phone, for example. And if they did, I couldn't care because there's nothing on it that's incriminating. Certainly, that's what you would hope. The, the unfortunate fact is that whenever you uh, create a backdoor like this, it's going to be open to hackers, criminal hackers, and it's also going to be open to other forms of abuse. All right. Another issue here, other than the government, uh, is, is funding. And uh, is ISIS using Bitcoin for funding their operations? Is that something that is relatively easy to infiltrate and hack? Well, the, the, the fact that they probably are, that all chatter that I've seen is that they are, uh, it, it is a form of currency that is, is relatively ubiquitous and untouchable by governments. And as long as they're using that form of commerce, it's going to be hard to uh, stifle them in that, uh, financially. But if they're mainly in Syria and Iraq, how do they cash in their bitcoins? There's, there's a number of brokers that uh, all over the world that will uh, take Bitcoin and turn it into cash. So can we expect a group like Anonymous to hit Bitcoin accounts and bank accounts? I mean, some are saying that, you know what, it's only fitting that you have a vigilante justice group going after a rogue terrorist organization because it's no longer a state versus state fight. This is not your grandfather's yeah. war. 
and we need to rely on these kind of people for all means. Yeah, well, Anonymous being a collective that's worldwide, uh, they, um, there are a lot of uh, uh, computer scientists, many of them, both good and bad hackers, that uh, so some of them, or many of them, certainly have the time uh, to uh, infiltrate these organizations. Uh, they have done good in the past, and they've certainly done bad in the past. Uh, my guess is that, you know, with this motivation, they, they always seek a cause. Uh, they will, you know, more than likely uh, do some good. But, you know, this is a, an issue that is handled by governments, by law enforcement. And in the end, that's who's going to solve this problem. So regardless if it's anonymous or governments or non-governmental organizations, from a tech point of view, what is the best way to try and thwart ISIS? You know, I've been asked this question before, and I'm going to say it again. I don't see this as being a technology problem. This is a, a, a literal boots on the ground issue, and it needs to be solved that way. But technology is one of the fronts in this fight. Certainly, but you shut down, if you even shut down Twitter, you shut down Facebook, you shut down YouTube, they're, they're still going to have ISIS. They're still going to bomb. The, 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 again, it's a boots on the ground issue. They're still going to move in a forward direction. Well, Robert, question is whose boots are going to be on that ground? Uh, All right. Thank We're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much, Robert Siciliano, security analyst with Hotspot Shield.